Now, going to our final session, we've created an interface. We now are going to configure a DHCP scope. And the following are the steps, create the scope, name the scope, verify, configure and enable the scope, verify and enable the scope. Okay, simple steps. What do we have here? Let me have my pen. Let me have it in black. All right, creating a scope. So what when I said management clients, they get their addresses from the controller. Management clients. It means there is a DHCP scope or a pool of addresses that is created on the controller. That is the DHCP scope we are going to create here. So that scope is created so that management devices can get their IP address from that pool. The other wireless LAN, uh, wireless, uh, LAN clients that are connected to the network, they'll be getting their IP addresses from the router according to the topology that uh, we, we, we started with. So this one here, we create the new DHCP scope so we are at the controller, we, we enter the internal DHCP scope, we create the new, create the new scope. After you create the new scope, you name it. In this case, it is named wireless management. After you name it, verify the new scope. You can see the new scope, Rabo Iro wireless management. It has been created, but from the pool, Information in a pool, these are default IP addresses, 000000. It means pool, I said here configure yet. Step number four, that's where we configure the pool radio. So in this case, maybe not as visible, but you can see pool I create was for addresses from 192.168.200, 240 to 249. So this is 240, this is 249. This is the network ID. This is the network mask. This is the default router. The default router, that is the default gateway for the network. We go back to our router radio. On this interface, we had my sub interfaces created dot 200, dot 1, dot 5, dot 1. It means the default route for our pool, for clients in that pool, will be dot 200, dot 1. This is where we get this dot 200 dot one. Then the status, it should be enabled. Once it's enabled, apply, save. Then you have your DHCP scope. You have created a DHCP scope. Verifying what we have uh, configured, the name wireless management, the scope 192.168.200.240 to dot 249. So it means my access points A do they'll be getting address from this pool. It moves my addresses at a such a tangent of 192.168.200.240.241.242 max points at a signing on these addresses. Even an admin signing on an address from this range as well. That is what it means. That is the DH scope that I created from the internal DCP server. Configuring enterprise wireless LAN. By default, newly created LANs on the controller we have WPA2 Enterprise 802 is the default key management protocol used with the radio server. How do we create that? Okay, it's as easy. We are doing quite a number of things we have done already. So We've created a new wireless LAN already. We want to see how do we configure WPA2 Enterprise. We now want to see how do we configure the security protocols which go with WPA2 Enterprise. So once we've created our wireless LAN, 
we've done this part already. We've created our wireless LAN. Let me see. Our wireless LAN is created. We've done this part already. Right. Security. Number four. We started at number four. We, we have created our wireless LAN. Step number four, where we select the security protocols to use. In the first step when we created our network, we used WPA2 and we used AES. If you are using WPA2 Enterprise, you go, as you can see, you go to WPA2, the policy that you choose, WPA2 Enterprise, WA, WPA2 policy, if I can say, that's the, uh, you go and tick by WPA2 policy, then by encryption type, it's AES, by authentication type, instead of PSK, you go with 802.1.1x, 802.1x, just below PASAPA, just below up, PANENGAPANE PSK. So you don't tick PSK, you tick 802.1x. If you go via 802.1x, it means we now have to configure our security protocols to use the RADIUS 7. So once that part is done, we go to AAA servers. So per table security, panel layer 2, layer 3 in the AAA servers. Where you choose Kutindoshansa Enterprise per layer 2 up. Then you go to the AAA servers per drop down receiver. Pana, you see pana, pana IP address that are configured before Kuti telling our controller what will be the radio server that it will need to use for AAA services. So per drop down that IP address you had configured, it will pop up here. Then you tell your wireless LAN, the type of security that is going to be, that it is going to be using. Once done, apply, you verify your wireless LAN. So in this case, you can see our wireless LAN type, our profile name wireless LAN, our SSID wireless LAN, our, okay, okay, we are not using this one. The one we created is this one, VLAN 5. So we have wireless LAN, company name, company name, enabled, the status is enabled. And right here, you can see the security protocol being used is 802, 802.1x, meaning it's enterprise. Can I get the PSK? Can I get the PSK? It means it's personal. Two different things, two types of protocols that we can use, personal and enterprise. So that's how you select a enterprise. Now to troubleshooting our wireless LAN issues. Network problems can be simple or complex and can result from a combination of hardware, software, connectivity issues. Technicians must be able to analyze the problem, determine the cause of the error before they can resolve the issue. This process is called troubleshooting. I think at this stage, you probably understand Importance, your engineer is probably by design and by troubleshooting. Knowing can I a problem, how do you then fix that problem? Very important. Now, troubleshooting of any problem, it should be done following a systematic approach. A common and efficient troubleshooting methodology is based on the scientific method and can, can be broken down into six main steps. On paper, the systematic approach works perfectly fine, but I believe troubleshooting goes end to end with experience. The more you experience the problems, you solve them. That's how you know how to solve the problem. Obviously, the systematic approach helps in understanding probably where to start, but uh, experience is the best teacher here. Six steps that we have, you identify the problem, establish the probable cause, test the theory of uh, to determine the cause, establish a plan, resolve the problem, verify if it's functional, if system is functional. If it's not, you go back again to probably step number two. If it is functional, 
you document your findings, actions, and outcomes. This is just an approach of uh, identifying problem on our solution, I get to say. With wireless LAN networks, probably best place to start, for example, I'll give you an example. Let's say in a wireless LAN, my clients five are connected to that LAN, wireless LAN, only one client is not working. What it means, problem in per client. Because my, my clients, they are functional. If you go up a notch, my clients air say they don't have connectivity. You can start by my clients, yes, to troubleshoot. Or not, are they connected? My SSID are proper, my password that proper. My PCs are on here, those basics. But if my client's is going to send a network, it probably means could access point and drop on a problem. Or have a access point, it probably means my settings and controller don't have a problem. So those are some of the ways that you can, with experience, know could you get a problem, you could see PC I got here in a, in a network. Because under cash and companies, there are not huge problems. One or some password a CDO. One was to or don't go tired of connected to the network because they don't know how to connect to the network. So those are some of the ways that you can troubleshoot the network. Let me see, finish this up. Wireless clients not connecting. If there is no connectivity, check the following. Confirm network configurations on the PC using IP config. PC no connection to a pure IP address, probably. In a DHCP, I know about pure IP address. It means it cannot connect to the network. So how do you verify that? IP config on out in IP address here. Can I see now? Probably IP config renew so that you can get an IP address. Then PC at all connected, uh, client at all connected to the network. Troubleshooting. Confirm that the device can connect to a wired network. Ping a known IP address. This is just a way you go now with the PC go. Is it working? All right. Wirelessly, it's not working. But on a wired network, is it working? If it's not working on a wired network again, it probably means your PC has a problem or the client has a problem. Then you can start fixing the problem from there. If needed, reload the drivers. You can change the NICs. If the client is working, check the security mode encryption settings on the clients. If the mode, if Parushan is for enterprise, where you are stuck trying to to you don't have a profile created on the client you are stuck trying to use the psk but the security mode and i got choose when a controller for that specific line the enterprise you won't be able to access the network so knowing the security mode the, uh, the right specific uh, right security mode to use it's also important as well if PC is operational, the wireless connection is performing poorly, check is the PC out of the plan coverage area, check the channel settings, check for interference. Sometimes connection, if it is connected, but with poor performance. Issue number one, are you in the coverage area? No, but I'm not, uh, I'm not connected to the network. If this is the coverage area, Uh, well, it's not connected. Okay, right here. Right. If this is our coverage area and our client is here, it means you won't be connected to, 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 to the network, obviously. You need to be inside this coverage area. If there is interference, multiple access points overlapping, the channel is overlapping, and they are not associated with non-overlapping channels. There will be interference. Performance will be poor. That's why we need, we use 1611, the channels. Then lastly, uh, check for interference with the 2.4 gigahertz band. 2.4 gigahertz band in a lot of devices. Almost every device that connects wirelessly, it has that, uh, it uses that frequency band. It means, 
Rega re congested most of the times. So check for interference. Can I only my devices that use that uh, frequency band probably switch them off so that you can improve access to your network. Next, ensure that all devices are actually in place. Consider a possi possible physical security issue. Is there power to all the devices that are powered on? I think when you think troubleshooting, you think uh, very complex issues. But, I, but from the little experience that I have had, they are not complex issues. Troubleshooting is actually an IT guy being called, I'm not connecting to the internet. You go on a PC, it off. I suit over here and the client is complaining they are not connected to the network. Or access point off. You just switch it on, everyone gets access. It's not a complex problem always. Very simple problems. Finally, inspect links between cables, devices looking for bad connectors, damaged, miss, missing cables. Those are some of the ways you can troubleshoot bad connectors, damaged cables. If the physical plant is in a place, verify wired line by pinging devices, including the AP. When we do the actual configurations in the next sessions that we are going to be doing, you will see once we've uh, set up our network, once we, we've made all the connections, mm -hmm. we don't just start by, for example, accessing the controller via the, 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 the web. At times you need to ping that controller just to see if there is connectivity. Ping the access point to see if there is connectivity. If there is no connectivity, therefore you will not be able to access uh, the controller or the AP. You can start troubleshooting from there. Check power status of the AP. We've talked about that. When the PC is eliminated as the source of the problem, the physical status of the devices is confirmed. Begin investigating the performance of the AP. Once you see my PCs, they are functional. You go up to the access point and see good my issues here. Access point can read on cabling incorrect. Probably my settings are configured to controller. They are not correct. You go to controller, try to find the problem from there. To optimize and increase the bandwidth, dual band routers and APs. To optimize and decrease the bandwidth of 802.11 dual band routers and APs. Okay. Either upgrade your wireless clients. I think the question which arise in one of uh, the sessions that we did, uh, it was an issue of compatibility. And that issue can be solved by upgrading your wireless clients. Older 802.11 BG, even some end devices can slow the entire wireless line for best performance. All wireless line devices should support the same highest acceptable standard. If they are not supporting the same standard, compatibility issues. If one is using, okay, the, the standards are not the same, but they all support 2.4 gigahertz. There will be connection. But if you are using one, 802.11, uh, a very old standard, and you're using AC or AX, a very new standard, performance will still be slow. So it means my clients ASA, they need to be upgraded so that they have the same standards as, the highest the same standards as your access points. Splitting traffic, optimizing the bandwidth. The easiest way to improve wireless performance is to split the wireless traffic between the 2.4 gigahertz band and the 5 gigahertz band. Therefore, 802.n can use the two bands as separate wireless networks to help manage the traffic. We mentioned this earlier. You use the 2.4 gigahertz, you configure it as a network on its own. You configure the 5 gigahertz, you configure, you configure this as a network on its own. You split the traffic. So now traffic, yes, say for example, if you want to access the website, if you want to manage uh, your IoT devices, your, your smart home devices, if you want to manage devices that use, that does not require a lot of speed, that uses not much data, 
then you you connect them to the 2.4 gigahertz if you are using uh time sensitive traffic that requires high speed uh, high data rates etc etc then they will use the 5 gigahertz so it's the same device same access point or same router with the two bands you separate the two bands you separate applications of those two bands therefore performance we generally increase that way. There are several reasons for splitting traffic. 2.4 gigahertz may be suitable for basic internet traffic that is not time sensitive. The bandwidth still be shared with other nearby wireless lines. The 5 gigahertz band is much less crowded than the 2.4 gigahertz band. Okay, ideal for streaming. So if you want to stream, you connect your device to the 5 gigahertz wireless network. 5 gigahertz band is more channels, therefore channel chosen is likely less interference-free. Interference Troubleshooting continued. By default, Joe band routers and APs use the same network name on both 2.4 and 5 gigahertz. It may be useful to segment the traffic. Simplest way is to rename one of the wireless traffic. So when we were creating our wireless LANs, especially on the routers, you see there was a 2.4 gigahertz and its settings, 5 gigahertz, and its own settings. And I mentioned when splitting the traffic, it means the SSID for this traffic. This type of traffic on 5 gigahertz and this one on 2.4, they should not be the same, the SSID. If you separate the SSID, that's the starting point of splitting the traffic. If you name them the same, then at times traffic will be using the 2.4, uh, devices will be using clients, will be using the 2.4, sometimes they'll be using the 5 gigahertz. But if you split, it becomes very easy. If you if you rename the SSIDs and give them different names, it becomes easy to split traffic that way. To improve the range, ensure the router or AP location is free of obstructions, especially when using the 5 gigahertz band easily. It can easily be obstructed, although it provides for faster speeds, obstruction, interference, it can easily be interfered by furniture, tow appliances, walls. This blocks the signal, which shortens the range of the LAN, wireless LAN. If this still not uh, does not solve the problem, then a range extender or a power line wireless tech can be used. Troubleshooting. Updating firmware, most routers offer upgrade, upgradable firmware. My updates are basically on a controller, there will be most likely be the ability to upgrade the firmware on all access points. So you can push my updates on all access points. The reason why you push my updates so that you get better performance, better security probably, therefore improving performance of your network. And ah, this is the end of wireless LAN configurations. The next session we do, we go directly to Packet Tracer and we do our lab. I think that's it for this one. Thank you very much for giving an ear. We're done.